Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and as Marvel Spider-Man 3 continues production, one huge question that the films haven't really addressed, but we are looking to get some answers on, is the matter of this version of Peter Parker's origin story. How did Tom Holland and Peter Parker become the underoos spider-ling? I mean, we know the basic gist, radioactive spider bite, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, after seeing that twice in two other Spider-Verses, three if you're counting Miles Morales, Marvel Studios elected to introduce their Peter Parker already in the throes of superheroics by the time Tony Stark recruited him to Team Iron Man in the Civil War event. Well, a new detail has just been confirmed about Peter's past in the MCU timeline, making it seem even more likely that this third Marvel Spider-Man film could address this history in a way that could be important in the way the film might cross over elements from past Spider-Verses with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, if that ends up happening. And I think I just discovered a huge new detail in Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm gonna break down everything I've learned. Spoiler warning in case I am right and uh, that ruins your life. Okay, so when we first met Tom Holland, Peter Parker, and Captain America Civil War, his bio was a bit spotty. Climbing walls? How are you doing that? Adhesive gloves? It's a, a long story. I was- Lordy, uh, can you even see in these? Yes, yes, I can't, look, I can't. I can't, I can see in those, okay? It's just that when whatever happened happened, it's like my senses have been dialed to 11. They just kind of help me focus. Peter goes on to say that he has had these powers for six months. Then in Homecoming, Peter chatted with Ned about his spider bite. You got bit by a spider? Can it bite me? Well, it probably would have hurt, right? You know what, whatever. Even if it did hurt, I would let it bite me. M maybe. How much did it hurt? The spider's dead, Ned. Shortly after that, Tom Holland and Kevin Feige retconned a detail all the way back in Iron Man 2, confirming that the boy in the Iron Man mask that Tony Stark saves at the Expo Fairgrounds was a young Peter Parker. Actually, if you rewatch Iron Man 2, that kid actually shows up way earlier when Tony gets mobbed by fans at the fairgrounds. But Homecoming seems to tie in this retcon by showing Peter's phone video recording the Queen's World's Fair sphere, suggesting he is remembering that event, but presumably the historic spider bite happened between that Iron Man 2 event and Tony's apparent reunion with Peter in Civil War. There was a reference to that bite in an alternate version of Iron Man Nick Fury's post credit scene. As if gamma accidents, radioactive bug bites, and assorted mutants weren't enough. And right before Civil War, there was a line in Ant-Man interpreted as a nod to Spider-Man's arrival to this world. Well, we got everything nowadays. We got a guy who jumps, we got a guy who swings, we got a guy who crawls up the walls. You gotta be more specific. And we also got confirmation that there was an Uncle Ben to Peter in this universe with a close-up of his suitcase in Far From Home, revealing the initials BFP for Ben f***ing Parker. Or if you're lame, Ben Frank. Franklin Parker, the presumed middle name for the character. But the recent new detail came up in this MCU book that we've been talking about, the Wakanda Files, Shuri's collection of journal entries related to weaponry and technology in the universe. In a section titled Tony Stark Personal Log, Tony writes how he tracked down Peter Parker through Peter's YouTube channel, which we did see a little of in Homecoming, with one post talking about Peter's experience being bitten by a radioactive spider and gaining superhuman strength. Tony goes on to wonder about his web shooters and where they came from. So what we know about Peter as a YouTuber? Well, if you look closely at a shot in Homecoming, Peter does watch the clip of that same bus save that Tony showed him in Civil War. It was uploaded by the account named Rocket Robinson 67 but, you know, based on the fact that someone must have been recording this video from a handheld phone camera while Peter was in the video, and at that time no one knew Peter was Spider-Man and Peter would not want this footage out in the world, I doubt Rocket Robinson 67 is Peter. But Peter did tell Tony back then that this exact video was fake. Because you know that's all fake. It's all done on the computer. And if you look in the comments beneath this bus video, the top comment comes from, it looks like an account name, like 2Bits2Something54, who comments, fake, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, one. I think that commenter could be Peter's account, and that could be how Tony tracked him down, and that is why Peter is watching this particular video after Tony found him in Civil War. Based on new clues we are seeing from the Spider-Man 3 set, I think this next movie will revisit these early years. Uh, before we continue, this video was brought to you by Audible and their unmatched selection of audio products. Audible just launched their newest plan, Audible Plus, and with it, you will get access to the Plus catalog filled with thousands of originals, audiobooks, and podcasts, including exclusive series like Heist with Michael Caine or A Grown-Up Guide to Dinosaurs. Best of both worlds there. And if The Mandalorian isn't enough to scratch your Star Wars universe itch, Audible has 
has a big Star Wars collection, including Star Wars Ahsoka, narrated by Clone Wars voice actor Ashley Eckstein. And if you're not in the mood for a galaxy far, far away, they got the goods from Stephen King, Agatha Christie, J.R.R. Tolkien, and all the other literary heavyweights. Audible Plus connects you to tons of content, whether it's comedy, fantasy, true crime, science fiction, or fitness and wellness. You can even squeeze in a workout or guided meditation without having to go to a gym or a class. Now, the Audible app is free and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets, and you can listen across devices like Amazon Alexa-enabled devices without losing your spot. That's pretty cool. Now is the best time to try Audible Plus. With the holiday offer, it's only $4.95 a month for your first six months. After your first six months, it's still only $7.95 a month to download and stream thousands of all-you-can-listen audiobooks, originals, and podcasts included in the Audible Plus plan. So now is the time to try Audible Plus. Just go to audible.com slash newrockstars or text newrockstars to 500-500. And with the holiday offer, it is only $4.95 a month for your first six months. Again, that's audible.com slash newrockstars or text newrockstars to 500-500. Okay, so again, the big question we still don't really know about this Peter Parker is exactly what went down with his Uncle Ben and the full events of how he got his spider bite. I think the third Spider-Man film currently in production has a great opportunity to fill in this history, especially with speculation that Doctor Strange is joining this plot. We could be looking at a kind of multiverse, Spider-Verse crossover with people like Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield returning. Again, still not confirmed. If you remember Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker was bitten by a genetically modified spider on a field trip by an accident due to him getting a little too thirsty, snapping glamour shots of Mary Jane. Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker, though, deepened that mythology by making that spider come from the lab of Oscorp, a total conspiracy, tying in the research of Peter's father, hinting that Peter might have been destined to become Spider-Man. Now, the Tom Holland version hasn't gone into it yet, but it seems like it is swinging back toward the Toby direction. Based off what he told Ned, it seemed like a one-time random event, but also sticking closer to the more canonically true Andrew Garfield version in which Peter builds his own web shooters and web fluid, as opposed to, you know, it coming out of weird organic glands in his wrists. Now, after Homecoming came out in 2017, Tom Holland joked that he wanted Tobey Maguire to play the MCU version of Uncle Ben. And now that Maguire is being rumored to make a cameo in this third MCU film, many have been spinning theories suggesting the MCU Uncle Ben could be played by Maguire, but will be a separate character than Maguire as an alternate universe Peter Parker, but that the two men just look exactly alike, which I guess will lead to some what head turning. I don't know about that. But recently, I explored Tom Holland's first look image confirmed from the Spider-Man 3 set and talked about that mystery hand visible on the right side of frame. I pointed out how the sleeve hangs down over the knuckles, which many of you have since pointed out matches almost exactly the sleeves of Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man from his film. Garfield could be standing right beside Holland's Spider-Man here in that set that they're on right there with the blue screen. Industrial floor fan, they could be in an interdimensional cross stream, the web of life and destiny where Doctor Strange could help these alternate Peter Parkers meet and cross paths and help each other. Good Ned Eyeball Void. It is still way too early to know any of this stuff, but I bring it up because one thing we know about Sony, the studio taking the lead on storytelling with consultation from Marvel, is that Sony seems pretty dead set on working in plot points from their past Spider-Verses into the next Spider-Verse. Their reboots are never complete clean slate resets. They kind of just do what they were always going to do. Like, take Dr. Connors, the lizard. He was chosen as the villain for the rebooted Amazing Spider-Man after he was set up as a villain by Sam Raimi in his Spider-Man 2 and 3. Similarly, Vulture was the villain in Homecoming after Raimi planned for Vulture in a fourth Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie that never happened. And now we're seeing that with Jamie Foxx Electro coming to the MCU Spider-Man 3 from the Amazing Spider-Man 2, apparently never truly dead in Sony's eyes. So all of that stuff with Oscorp being behind Peter's spider bite, the Sinister Six plans, yeah, I think that could end up being the case for Tom Holland, Peter Parker's origin story and future in the next film. That could be what Andrew Garfield and Peter Parker helps him understand. And while I would hope we don't see exactly the version of Harry Osborn Goblin we got in that film, yikes. I think we are all eager for Oscorp to be established in the MCU. Somehow, this could be it. If you want to help support this channel, check out our merch store at NewRockStarsMerch.com. We got a bunch of stylish gift options you will love. Subscribe to New Rockstars, hit that notification bell. Follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars. See you next time, and uh, may that time be a pizza one. Pizza time.